You wanted water, here it is. And David says, I cannot drink the blood of these men. What he's, say, what he's saying is, this is so costly. This is so precious. This is so valuable. This is so highly esteemed that no human being is worthy to take this. I would be a scoundrel. I'd be a cad of the lowest type if I took this for myself. Because the only one that deserves something so precious, so powerful, is God himself. So he pours it out to the Lord. If he would have received that, it would have been absolutely godlessly blasphemous. He says, this is something that's so precious, only God deserves it. And he pours it. Now, what some people would say, what a waste. You mean we did all that for him to pour it out? But I'll tell you who you echo if you think that. Judas Iscariot. Because Mary Magdalene, having been delivered from a life of sin, having seven demons cast out of her, you have to think, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about Mary Magdalene's life. She had an older brother, he, he was an older sister, and she was the youngest. Lazarus was her older, older brother, Martha was her older sister, she's the youngest. Their parents die. Lazarus is left in charge of the house. He's probably about 19. This young man, all of a sudden he's got the burden of the entire house. Martha, she's probably about 16 or 17. But Mary, she's probably 12 or 13 at the most. And here, they probably, their parents probably died and left them with a lot of debt. But Lazarus is left in charge of the house. He's trying to bring the house out, trying to get, trying to take care of his sisters, trying to provide for them, trying to keep the debtors off because they would have taken his, his sisters into slavery to pay off the debt. And here they are suffering need. Now, Lazarus and Martha had been with their parents enough to have some kind of moral rudder. But Mary, being the youngest and being an orphan, now, I can see bitterness creeping into her heart and saying, I'm going to be destitute. I'm going to be on, on the street as a beggar. I'm going to be nothing. But, I'm... but then she started getting propositions. Skanky old men offering her money. She said, nah, I'll take care of you. I'll be your sugar daddy. You give me the sugar. And so she saw that it was easy money. She found out that she was attractive. And she says, I don't have to live in need and want. My brother and sisters, my brother and sister, they can go through stuff if they want. But she found an easy way of life. But after a while, she found that she hated that life and she hated herself. You following me? But then comes this teacher. She says, man, I've seduced the best of them. I've been with rabbis. I've been with religious people. I've been with all. And she comes and she tries to seduce Jesus. And Jesus looks at her with eyes that she's never seen before. Somebody that looks at her with purity of heart, purity of mind. Somebody that says he loves her, but he doesn't want anything from her, but he rather wants to give to her. Not for anything that he could receive from her, because she has nothing that she can offer him. She has seen for the first time in her life pure love, love in the purest form. And as she tries to proposition him, she feels filthier and filthier every time. But she finds nothing of condemnation in his gaze. But she, she finds that there's a compassion there. Something that is broken where she's broken. And that understands her need as nobody understood. And the closer, the more she tries to seduce him, the more broken she is. And as Solomon said, you have seduced me, and I have been enticed. And she falls at his feet, seeing how undone she is. And Christ reaches down and touches her, and the seven demons come screaming out of her, and she finds herself forgiven, saved, changed, transformed, hallelujah. She finds herself water poured out. I have no other life. You are my life. You are who I hunger and thirst after. You! She gives herself to him. Hallelujah. How beautiful. So Jesus comes into town again, and she comes and she remembers a precious box of alabaster. 
costly, very expensive, that one of her lovers gave her in payment, that had an ointment that was worth a year's salary of a good paid man. And she says, I want to give this to Jesus. She breaks that box. She says, I don't want this thing again. I'm water poured out to the earth. And she pours that precious ointment over Jesus. Jesus doesn't say, what are you doing? And then she goes down on his feet. Her tears wash his feet. And she begins to wipe his feet with her hair and that precious ointment there. And Jesus receives it. But somebody says, why this waste? Why this waste? And he gets others to murmur, why this waste? This could have been sold and given to the poor. But it turns out that it was Judas Iscariot that said, why this waste? Judas himself, who had no interest in the poor, but always put his hand in the coffer to steal for himself. Why this waste? Anything poured out on Christ, could it be a waste? Or it could be the best investment that could ever be had. I conclude with this word. When I got saved at 17, as I mentioned, I had a full ride scholarship to an Ivy League college. Full ride. This is back in 1971. Full ride then was different from the full ride now because, you know, you're talking about several hundred thousand dollars now. Uh, we're talking about less than 10000 then, but it, the value was the same. I had a full ride scholarship, and I'd give my life to Christ. Everything was paid. Now, this is shortly after the death of Martin Luther King. You have to think about it. Let's, let's, put, let's put things in historical context. You have a black young man who gets a, a prominent scholarship, and in the community, oh, the community, the my counselors, oh yeah, we got, we got a black young man going to, going to a, an Ivy League university. And it's not, what's it, affirmative action? <laughs> you know, oh, oh he's going he's to go, it's not a sports scholarship, it's an academic scholarship. <laughs> you know, you, you see what I'm saying? This is back, and like I said, King is recently dead. You know, and here it is. And so there, there, were, there were black lawyers in the community. Yes, yeah, we're going to promote this guy. And God says, you're not going to accept that scholarship because I've got other plans for you. I said, well, how am I going to say no to this? I mean, you know, it's nice to have faith. It's nice to go to church and everything. But this is, you know, what? And God says, do you think I'm playing with you? He literally told me that. Do you think I'm playing with you? He told me very sternly. This is not a game. I told you not to go. You're not going to accept that. I've got other plans for you. I thought, oh, God, this is going to get heavy. I've got to tell my mom. My mom was hobnobbing with this. Now it's my son. He did. And I've got to tell her, God told me not to go. Oh, I said, this is going to get violent. <laughs> you said in that movie, there will be blood. <laughs> oh, I said, this is not going to be good. And I've got to tell my counselors. I've got to tell everybody, I'm not going to go. They're going to say, I'm crazy, and they did. They're mad, and they said one other thing. But you know what I did? My mom had, my mom had a Bonneville. She just bought a nice Bonneville. It was a convertible. You had to go back in the day, you know. Had this beautiful uh, blue Bonneville, leather interior and everything. It was convertible. I said, this is up in Monterey, California. I said, this is a nice day. Why don't you put the hood down, you know, the, put the, the top down? Because I figured, if i got to jump out this thing... <laughs> I'm serious. If I got to jump out at the stop line, I'm jumping out. If this, this could get radical. And so, so I waited until she stopped at a stoplight, and I said, uh, Mom, that scholarship. She said, Yeah, I'm so proud of you, honey. I said, Mom, God told me not to take it. God told you not to take it. Well, then she said God again, but in another, another completely different context. <laughs> yeah, it just wasn't, wasn't the same thing. And then, so, ooh, and boy, like I said, she blistered the paint on the battleship. But at the same time, when I thought I was going to have to run for my life, a blessing from God, the heavens opened up, and the power of God fell on me. And without thinking about it, without thinking about what she would respond, I, it just happened. It was an organic, it was a natural response. I began to worship God and praise God. I thought, oh. And afterwards, I thought, oh, I'm sitting here shouting hallelujah, glory to God, and I'm glorifying the Lord. And she's thinking, he's mad. He's lost his mind. He's gone crazy. I'm going to call the men with a, you know, she started 
cursing me and blaspheming God. Me, she says, why this waste? And the entire community, why this waste? My counselors, why this waste? Why this waste? Why this waste? Judas is scary. The thing is, nothing poured out over Christ is a waste. Amen? Nothing poured on Christ is a waste. Now, I, the only thing I had, I was never very athletic. I mean, I, was, I weighed 120 pounds, soaking wet with a wet blanket on me, you know, back then. I was, the, the only thing I had was my intellectual acumen back then. And I said, Jesus, I want to give you that. It's the most esteemed. It's the most valuable thing I have. I'm going to give that to you. What's the most esteemed and most valuable thing that you have in your life? Water. That if you're in the desert, it's worth everything. You have a jug of water in the, in the desert, and that's the last of it. Somebody comes up and offers you the keys to a Maserati. You're going to trade them? Co offers you the Mona Lisa. You're going to trade it? What good are the coins on a dead man's eyes? That which is your life, that is what should be poured out on Christ. Water. You must be born of the water. Let's stand. Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your word. Thank you for this time. I know it's been a, a lengthy teaching. Father, I didn't have two or three Sundays to share this. And I pray this, this word will last for a long time. I pray that this will transform entire, our entire thought about what it means to be born of the water, Lord.